everyone, Cassandra Clark here. I'm a visual artist based in Austin, Texas. Very excited to bring you this colorful art demo. Great for kids and great for kids of all ages. So this is a really fun way that you can play with watercolors. I will walk you through what the supplies are, but it's coffee filter art. You can create these beautiful things that you can use as sun catchers. I'm going to show you how to make them into butterflies, into flowers, and really creative ways that you can use this using supplies you might have at home. Can't wait to walk you through it. So let's get started with some fun ways to get this done. First and foremost, grab your coffee filter. You can do this one at a time or if you want to double up because maybe you want a couple of them with the same pattern, you can do a couple at once. But I think it's fun to do one at a time so you can get a big variety. You're going to take the coffee filter, fold it in half, just like this. You want to fold it in half again, just like a fan. So now you kind of got this little corner piece. Fold it in half again. Now you're done with the small version. And you can leave it like this if you want to create a butterfly or just a basic sun catcher. If you want to make a flower for later, and many of you will be creating flowers and I'm going to turn into a larger piece later. So if you want to make a flower, then all you have to do at this point, fold it in half one more time. So it's pretty thin, right? So we've got it down to this. And then I like to cut, just use scissors, cut the top around like a little, little divot. So you make just a little round shape with the scissors. And now you can see that it's got this rounded edge just from cutting off this little bit on top. Then when you unfold it, you'll see what this ends up looking like later. These become flower petals and they're all symbolic because obviously the symmetry of folding it. So that's totally optional. If you just want to fold it in half, this is a fun way to get started. So once again, fold it in half, fold it again, and then fold it again. So you at least have this little piece. Now I highly recommend you have a protected surface. So start with either putting down a piece of plastic like I have here, put down some newspaper. I've also layered in paper towels because this project, while well, everything is water-based and will wash off, it can get a little messy. So I recommend that you put something down here to begin. And then I will show you how to get started with color. All right, now the first way I'm gonna show you how to do this is with watercolors. So if you have a watercolor set, and this can be either in the tube form or in a basic palette like this or in a pan, any way that you have watercolor-based paint, it's really simple. You've got your folded coffee square here, your folded coffee filter. You've got your colors here. A little brush usually is included with a lot of these sets. I have a cup of water ready to use. I'm gonna demonstrate with a large brush, just because I really like how it holds water, but any brush that is either made for watercolor or holds a lot of water, you can see how this is a little bit thicker and a rounded brush. This will make for a really nice effect. The key here is you really want it to be wet, so I also have my spritzer bottle ready to go. So what I'm gonna to do to start off is I'm just gonna spray this coffee filter right away. So I'm gonna open it up. And I've really soaked it. So now I have a very wet coffee filter that is folded. And I'm going to even flip it over and soak the other side. Because the wetter it is, the more the color will bleed throughout it. Now I'm going to take this brush, dunk it in my water so both the filter and the brush are wet. I'm going to pick any color you want. This is the fun part of it. You can mix any color combination that you're feeling. Right now I'm going to start with some blue. So I'm really getting a lot of color. You can see I'm using this water to really get it nice and watery so that I get a lot of this color on the brush. And then I'm just going to dab it in any way I want on the coffee filter. So you can see right now, I'm just doing it at the base. There's no rhyme or reason for this. You want to paint on one side, but any way you want. 
I really recommend you really get into the color. So add, if you're having a tough time scooping some of the color on your brush, get a little bit more water on your, from your cup. Get it really wet so the color gets picked up with watercolors. And then keep dabbing it. You really want to have a saturated amount. And the same thing goes if you're using for using watercolor-based markers. Make sure they're really juicy markers that you can really add in layers so that you get a lot of the texture. I'm putting a lot of the watercolor on the base right here. I like this nice blue. And you can see this is the same side that I'm painting on. You can see it's already seeping through the, through the back. That's what you want to create these designs. Now, if you want to switch colors, all you have to do, clean your brush, a little bit of water. And let's say I want to go with the green next. I'm going to do the same thing, get this green really lathered up. Make sure that I've got enough of the color. I'm really trying to get this color out. And then same thing. You can dab it. You can dot it. You can swipe it any way that you feel comfortable. Make sure you get a lot of this color on there. And any time, again, if you feel like it's not picking up enough, just get your brush wet again. Go back in. Dab it a little bit. Now, the last color I want to do for this one, let's say I'm going to go with a yellow. So get my brush wet again. I just cleaned it same way. I'm going to fill it up with yellow, lots and lots, and circling it around in the palette to get a lot of this color. Same thing, I'm going to dab it on to the brush. I'm going to dab it onto my coffee filter. I'm rubbing it here, getting the tops of this. So I'm just adding layers. There's really no rhyme or reason. You can go stripes, you can paint it. Alternatively, I'll show you with watercolors, if you have a palette, you can spread it out and just paint it like as is, as though it's a landscape. Now, the cool thing about this, I've got a lot of water on it. You can keep adding layers onto it. Right now, it's very wet, and they're very delicate when they're wet, so you want to be careful. I'm only picking this up to show you, but you want to leave it on the paper towel or plastic that you have it. You can see I've just done three layers, blue, green, into yellow. You can use as many colors as you want. There's no wrong way to do this. And you know when it's working, if you, when you flip it over or look on the other side, it's starting to bleed through. So that's important. That shows you that it's wet enough that the colors are bleeding through. That's really what you want. And in case it's dry, Sometimes people like to pat it a little bit. You can use a paper towel to dab it or kind of push that color. And you can always use a spritz bottle. Just add a little bit more water. Make sure it starts seeping through. Now, once you have the colors that you like, this is the toughest part. You have to let this dry. So leave it for at least four hours in the sun. The best thing you can do, if you're willing to wait, leave it for 24 hours. Let it completely dry. You do not want to unfold it at this point because it's really delicate and it can rip. So once you have the color you like, you set it there and you let it be. You let this dry and you will have a beautiful creation later, I promise. I will show you what to do with it thereafter. That's the way to paint these coffee filters with any watercolors. That's the first way of doing it. Now another way, if you want to record, if you want to be able to do a watercolor-based coffee filter using a pan or a watercolor palette or even the tubes, if you put them on a paper plate, you can just use that color and reuse it again. You also don't have to fold it. If you want to paint directly on the surface, you can just place your coffee filter down. I wet it a little bit with a spritzer to get it nice and wet so that the color will start absorbing. And now one thing that I think is pretty cool, I did that other painting, that other coffee filter before, and I didn't bother changing the napkin below. You should note that this coffee filter is going to pick up some of those yellow, blues, and greens. If you don't want that effect, make sure you change this paper towel so you get net new colors. I kind of like when there's multiple colors, so I'm actually going to push into this so that it picks up some of that and it keeps it, it's going to be something even different. Same thing, use your brush, get it a little bit wet. I'm going to fill up whatever color this time. I got a little bit red going. I'm going to get a lot of this palette, make sure your brush is very wet. I'm leaning into the color. And this is a fun way, I'm just dabbing. There's no rhyme or reason for this. You can go straight across very gently. Remember that this is a very fragile material, so go very gently if you're painting across. If you, anytime you want to switch colors, make sure you get put your brush in water again so that you don't blend the colors. Let's say I wanted to add an orange. I'm getting it nice and covered on my brush here. I'm going to add some orange here. And you want to make sure that you're getting a lot of the color. This is a piece where it's sometimes hard to pick up some of this. Feel free to do it multiple times. Anytime you're having a tough time picking up this paint, dip it in water. and You want to scrub it again a little bit, get some of this color going. And so now I'm kind of doing a rainbow effect. Now I'm going to dab it again. I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to go into this violet over here. Same thing. I'm really getting into the color. The brush is wet. And I'm going to be adding it to this new coffee filter. And you can have a lot of fun with this. If you want to layer colors and see how they blend, you can see how colors mix. 
the beauty of this is it's meant to be a little bit abstract. So it's never going to be a perfect line, but that's what makes it so cool is that these colors can spread. They can blend into each other. It makes a really pretty landscape or really pretty abstract, colorful piece. Use your favorite colors. There's no wrong way to do this. It's really just meant to be fun. Same thing. I'm going to go back to this green that I really like. I'm going to put some green up the top. I'm just dabbing this in. You can go across, you can go in splotches. Some people like to do a very radial design, where that means you start in the center and go out or back in so that it looks like it's kind of color bursting. This is really just meant to show you the techniques when you have this coffee filter laying down, which is really easy. I'm adding some yellow now on the very top. And this is such a fun project. You can do this with kids of all ages, big kids. I'm having fun doing it. I'm a very big kid. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with this experiment. Now you keep playing with colors, any order that you like, until you feel happy with it. I'm doing bits and pieces, not even perfect lines anymore. I'm putting splotches of blue in some of the corners. It really, whatever you feel like. The whole fun part of this is the process, so don't be afraid to get creative. I'm going to add some blue here. All right. Now I feel like I like the colors, I'm making sure that it's really wet. You can even use your brush to add some of these water effects to it. This is kind of fun. If you have the brush and you have the cover down, Adding these water droplets makes the color disperse. I think of it as like a floating surface the color could sit on top of. That's what's really cool about watercolors. It will keep dispersing the more you add to it. Now, you can see this coffee filter is very thin, and it's just on top of this. It's a bunch of blended colors. Once again, I'm going to let this dry overnight. So if you wanted to paint a landscape or any kind of thing on a coffee filter, that's the way that you can do it openly and have a lot of creative freedom. Let me show you a couple other tools you can use to get some really cool effects. All right, now let me show you another really fun way that you can make some coffee filter art. So what I've done is I've purchased these watercolor, um, washable liquid watercolors. So they can come in jugs like this. I've just taken them in place and poured them into empty spray bottles, empty little jars, just plastic jars, and empty droppers. And so this is going to give me some really fun ways that I can create some beautiful coffee filter art. So let me show you how this will work. I've got a, a different jar and spray set for every color. And then I've labeled them accordingly so you don't mix them up. You start with taking your coffee filter, just like before. And this time, you do want to fold it again. Fold it in half. Fold it into quarters. Fold it again into eighths. So now we've got a nice little pie shape. And then same thing, if you want to make these into flowers, you're going to fold it one more time. And as I mentioned before, you're going to cut the top of it into a round shape. This is a totally optional step. Either way, you want to get, when you open it, you can then see it's kind of a heart shape. And these will become petals later, which is very cool. Whether you cut it or not, you're going to have it in this eighth shape over here. Place it on your surface. Once again, you want to make sure it's really wet. So I'm using my spray bottle, or if you have your paintbrush, if you only have a brush and water, you can use the brush and water, get the water on the brush and drop it in so that this is very wet. Now we're going to try with the spray bottle. So this first time I'm using this one, I'm shaking it up a little bit. This is a blue violet. I've labeled it as such. I'm going to spritz it a couple times on the side. Oh, you can see this is a very pretty blue violet color. Now I'm just going to spray it on my coffee filter. And I kind of go at an angle. I went to the side of it. You can kind of see that makes a really cool effect to one side of it. I'm going to try and blend some other colors on top of it and see how this seeps in. So this color, next one I'm going to use is a pink. Let's see how those make mix. Again, I'm going to Spritz it. These are all water-based. It's a little bit of water and then the water color solution. And adding this pink in, you can see I'm now getting this beautiful magenta and purple as they're starting to blend together. And I'm having a lot of fun with it, but I also notice the back isn't that wet. So when I put it back down, I'm going to go back and spritz this a little bit, keep it going wet. You want to make sure you get a lot of color here. So let's add another one. This one's a green. I'm going to put some a little green on the side over here, just spritzing that on a corner. I think it needs a couple sprays, two to three sprays, if you want to really soak in that color. Let's try over here. I've got an orange. We're going to make a very colorful piece. Let's put a little bit of orange over here. And then let's try one more color. This is my fuchsia. So it's kind of like a pink. And you can already see that it's starting to bleed through and seep in. Just to keep it really interesting, I'm actually going to flip this over. Because this side isn't as saturated, but it's going to make something really cool. So I'm going to take this fuchsia which is more of a magenta-y pink. 
I'm going to spritz this a few times and really soak the back of it. So the back's going to be very fuchsia. This last one I'm going to use, this is turquoise that I put in here. I love turquoise, so I'm going to just add, see what happens when I add some of this turquoise on the back. It's going to make like a deep blue-purple. Once again, you want to make sure it's really wet at this point. So I'm spritzing it again, making sure the back is super wet. And you can feel that it's really wet. It's soaking through now. A ton of color going on on both sides. It might, it's going to blend and bleed into each other. And this is going to be really cool later. Once again, you have to stop now. This is the part where you pause. It has to dry. Either leave it overnight, at least 24 hours if you can. Put it in the sunlight. That might help it cook a little bit quicker. Sometimes people use a hair dryer really quick, but... The key here is to let it dry completely before you open it up and see your creation. The fun part of spraying it is you, you get to see what it ends up looking like later. Let me show you another technique. All right, now this next one is really fun too. I'm going to show you how to make coffee filter art with pipettes and jars of wa liquid watercolor. So once again, take your coffee filter. And this one, you can either choose to fold it or even just keep it flat out. Either way, you're going to have some really fun creations. I recommend that we fold it in half. Fold it in half again. So we have quarters now. Fold it in half again, so we have eighths. Again, we've got this little pie shape. And you can choose to cut it again if you want to fold it in half one more time, if you want to make a little flower shape on top. But if not, we're going to leave it as is and keep it in this eighth. So whether it's heart-shaped or not, you want it about this size, so fold it into eighths. I'm going to place it back down. Now I've got this liquid watercolor in these little jars right here. This one is my, I believe this is my turquoise, this is my pink, and this is my yellow. I'm going to open these up. This is going to be really fun. I'm going to be using a pipette. So just these little plastic droppers. You can buy them in multiple packs online. They have them at a lot of art supply stores as well. You can get a ton of them pretty cheaply. So it's an empty pipette. I'm going to squeeze it here because if you don't know the way pipettes work, you squeeze it and then put it in water, and when you let it go, it will fill up with that liquid. It sucks it up. So that's what we're going to be using for this individual jars. So be careful not to spill it. I'm going to squeeze it right off the bat so that it's ready to suck up some of this liquid. I'm going to put, dip it into this jar and just suck up a little bit. You can see right here, it's already sucked up a little bit. I'm going to bring it over to my coffee filter, and I'm just going to drop it in. Let it go. You can make it in little drops, dabs. And you can see how it's already dispersing across my coffee filter. Now, if I want to switch into another color, I'm going to go back into the water, clean this out a little bit. So now I've done my turquoise. I'm ready to use my pipette. I want to do some pink this time. And again, open up my jar of pink, squeeze the top, suck in some of that pink, and then drop it right on my coffee filter. And what's cool, as you know, blue and red make purple. So already this pink and blue are starting to make some more of this beautiful violet on the sides. And it's bleeding through. You can already see it's bleeding through the back. That's what you want to happen. So I'm really, I'm really liking this color combination on the side so far. I'm going to flip this over and place it back down on my sheet. I still have my turquoise and I still have my pink. I'm going to switch now to a yellow. So again, I'm using my water just to clean up the pipette a little bit. So it's empty pipette going to open up my yellow. Same thing, squeeze it, get a little bit of this color going. And on this new side, same thing, I'm just going to drop it arbitrarily, however you feel. And what's cool now, because yellow and blue make green, you'll see the edges of this are bleeding through from the turquoise I had at the bottom. It's creating this really cool effect. So you can see already we're getting a green on this tip of the corner because those colors blended. And I still have that beautiful magenta fusion on this other side. So it's going to look really, really cool. Now you can either let this dry as is, and so all the colors are going to start mixing together. But if you want to keep them a little bit more separate, very, care very carefully start to open up your coffee filter. Now remember, when it's wet, it's very delicate. So you want to be really careful as you slowly open this up. You might need help with this. If you want to leave it to dry, it's going to be easier to open when it dries. Even if you just get it to this halfway point, you can already see some really cool color effects that are happening. I've got greens, I've got yellows, I've got blues. And here's what's awesome. Because we combined them while they were folded, when we open them up, it's going to create this really cool radial effect, meaning that it's going to start from the center and create some different effects on the way out. So you can see it's really tough to open it when it's wet. So again, I recommend you let it dry. 
I do want to show you what happens after you do this. So you can already see this really pretty effect. I've got yellows, I've got blues, I've got, it looks like it's bursting from the center, which makes a really cool effect. That's what happens when you have it folded. And I recommend you lay it down. You're going to let that dry. Sometimes it can take 15 minutes, a couple hours. If you let it dry overnight, it will really bake in those colors. So as patient as you can be to let it drop, to let it rest, that's a really good way to do it. But please play, feel free to play with some of these. There's a good way to combine some of these te techniques. Even if this one, while it's spread out, let's say you already used those droppers. I showed you earlier the spray effect. Let's say I want a little bit more pink. I'm going to grab my pink spray bottle. And I'm just going to put it wherever I feel like. A little bit here, a little bit there. And now, because I put it on an edge, and red and yellow make orange, now you can see the side is starting to turn a little bit orange, which is really cool, too. So now I've got a whole wild color combination that's going to look really pretty in the sunlight once it dries. So I'm going to let it sit there, and then I will show you one more technique. All right, now this last technique is a really fun way to, if for the major color lovers that want a bold pop of color. I'm going to take another coffee filter. It can be really fun to separate. <laughs> All right, I have one coffee filter. I'm going to fold it in half like we've done previous times. Fold it in half again into quarters. Fold it in half again into eighths. Got my coffee filter ready to go. I'm going to place it back on my surface. Now, we used the spray bottles a little bit earlier. We used the jars of color with the pipette, which is also fun. The last thing I want to show you is these droppers. So I've taken the same watercolor solution and I've placed it in these little droppers. This is a BB, a blue violet that I've created. I just labeled that way. Now that my dry coffee filter is down, this packs a lot of punch. So you just want to use a little bit at a time. I'm just dropping it in any way that I feel. And this can be really cool if you want to get more of a dotted effect. It will start to bleed out, which is what we want. So this is a good way if you want to really pack a punch of certain color. You can make sure to dot it. If you really like a certain color, I love this blue violet. I'm going to actually flip it over onto this other side. And remember, I like that when it picks up the color that's already on there. This is from previous coffee filters. If you want just this color, make sure you swap this out. Because if this is still wet, it's going to pick up any of that color, and so you're going to get a blended effect, which I think is pretty cool. But just keep in mind that it's going to pick up anything that you leave down. Same thing, I'm going to do a couple drops on the coffee filter. And now it's really fun to combine the colors. So over here, let's see, I'm going to grab my Fuchsia. This is one of the spray bottles. Now I'm combining techniques. So I'm using the droppers, the, the, the drip bottles. Now I'm using the spray to cover the back of this with the, the bright Fuchsia color that we really liked from last time. And that's covered here. I'm going to flip it back over to the original side that we dropped it on. And let's combine all the techniques. So I'm going to take this jar that we showed last time, open it up, got my pipette. I'm going to grab a little bit of this color. And same thing, I'm going to drop it in. And it can be any way you want. There's no wrong way to do this. The colors are going to blend. It's going to be beautiful. It's already pretty soaked through right now. And you can tell just by dabbing it a little bit. Sometimes if you're not sure if it's wet enough, you can kind of sneak a peek and open it up. And if it's still white in the middle, if you like that effect, you can leave it. If you want to make sure it's loaded with color, feel free to spray again another color. Use your pipette to get a droplet in. Use one of these droppers to add an aversive color. But what I'm going to also show you, so you see how one side is already, look at how much color contrast there is just from folding it. I want that to seep through all the way. So I'm actually going to flip it over on this dry side. I'm going to use that same spritz bottle. And just spray it a couple times. And you can see already that the color is going to start seeping through. So if you want to spray both sides, or even if you want to just press it down a little bit, either with your fingers, if you're not afraid of getting messy, or use that paper towel or any of the napkins, you want to blot your coffee filter a little bit. It's going to push the colors all the way through the different layers. So you can see there are a ton of colors going on right here. And this is the really cool part. Once it's dry and you open it up, you're going to get this beautiful kaleidoscope of color. And once this hits the sunlight, it's going to be a beautiful technique. And I will show you what to do with these once these are finished. So have fun. Keep playing. Feel free to use your spray bottles, your spritzers, your watercolor set that I showed you a little bit earlier. If you want to just use this for additional color, you can also use the spray bottle. You can use these droppers. And if you don't have any of these supplies, any washable water-based markers, even just some Crayola markers, they're really juicy. You can use the same technique on coffee filters. 
So have fun creating and making some beautiful kaleidoscope coffee filter art. All right, I'm going to have fun with you all combining all these techniques once again. Got my coffee filter. You want to fold it in half, fold it in half again. Got quarters, fold them in half again into eighths. If I want to turn it into a flower, once again, I'm going to fold it again one more time into sixteenths. I'm going to cut off the tip into a rounded edge just by moving the scissors right around so it creates this rounded edge. Open it back up so it's into eighths. I've got this eighth mm -hmm. version. I'm going to combine all these different materials. So I'm going to have these little droppers that I filled with this liquid watercolor. This one is Fuchsia. I'm going to add a couple drops here. It's a bold, beautiful pink color that I really like. Let's add. Oops. Got my spray bottle. I'm going to add sprays of yellow. It's going to create this cool orangey effect. Just in case I want an extra orange, I actually have the orange spray bottle. In case I want to make a contrast, this is an orange color. I'm going to actually flip this over, spray some orange on the back. These are different oranges. You can spray it pretty liberally. You want to put a good amount on there so it starts to soak through. Make sure that it's really wet. And now you can kind of see the difference between when the fusion yellow combined and what that orange looks like. And then when I spray the orange, I'm just making the lighter version. Now if I want to combine all these techniques, you can keep playing on the same surface. The middle of this one's a little bit drier. You can kind of see some of these white spotches. So I'm going to unfold it one time and set it down. Go back to my brush and my paint set. Get the brush really wet. And since we're playing with oranges, I'm just going to show you the variation of the different oranges that we're using. I'm going to really fill this up with color. I'm going to make sure I get some of this orange color going. I'm going to splat it on see how this compares. This is, again, if you've got any watercolor set, you can use this here. Make sure you're adding a lot of water. Getting it nice and wet. Anytime you want to switch colors, once again, make sure you clean up your brush and a cup of water. I'm going to get a little bit of this yellow, just for fun. See how that looks on the edges of this? Add it to the top. And I've combined all of these techniques. I'm getting this really pretty fiery yellow, red, fuchsia colors that I really just love. And for one more time, if you want a fun effect, you think that you're not getting enough of the burst of colors that you like, you can always go back to your pipettes. So I'm going to open up my liquid jar, get this the eyedropper, the pipette, squeeze it to pick up a little bit of the color, and then same thing, I'm going to drop some of this pink and little parts of it, and that's going to really soak through on the top. So I've used all the techniques that we've talked about, combined them all. I can't wait to show you what this one looks like at the end. It's a really pretty fiery color. And keep in mind, when it's wet, it's going to look a little bit different than when it dries. So just keep in mind that your creation is still creating, even when you're done playing with it. You can see this really cool radial, radial effect, kind of fiery burst. I love this color, color combination. And if it feels too sticky and you're having a tough time opening it, just leave it halfway closed and let it dry this way. I'm just going to show you what it looks like, just for a reference, but it's probably better, once again, just to let this dry as it is. Once you open it up, you can see the colors, because it's so wet, they're gonna, it creates this cool radial effect, but they're going to start dripping all over the place. So I'm going to let this one sit down and dry again. But have fun with these coffee filters. Try different color combinations. See what you combine. Use all of these techniques. And what's really cool is once it's dry, you can even doodle or color on it with markers after. You can add layers later. I'll show you some fun after effects of what this looks like as well. Alright, so you've made all these beautiful coffee filters, so what can you do with them? Coffee filter art, the process is so fun, there's no way that you can go wrong with these, so I really hope you enjoyed making them. Now you finally were patient enough, you let them dry, you've got these dry coffee filters now. When you unfold them, you can see some of the times we made really beautiful radial shapes just from letting those colors bleed into each other, which is really cool. So what can you do with them? One option, they're so pretty as is. You can tape these into a window and they can be sun catchers. You can keep one of these. You can write beautiful notes on them. This would be a really pretty card if you want a handmade thing. You can write on it. You can adorn it with the stickers that, that I gave you. You can make really pretty creative art. And these can be given as gifts. They can be taped in your window as a sun catcher and capture light. And I'm also going to show you a couple other things you can do. So many of you have a clothespin in your kit. So what you can do with some of your coffee filters, if you want to keep them, is you can take them, fold them in half, and you just start to pinch them right in the middle. 
So it's a little bit tricky. I'm pinching, as you can see, from both sides. So I'm pinching here and I'm pinching on the top to really kind of squish it in the middle so it becomes this compressed little piece in the middle. Once you have this all pinched together, you just take this little clothespin and you put it right there in the center. Oops. Sometimes it takes some practice. Yeah. But you put it right here in the center. It creates this beautiful little butterfly. Already, that's that simple. You can, If you feel free, if you've got a little marker or if you want to add some adornments, I'm just taking this little clothespin right here. I'm just going to add two little eyes, two little dots with the permanent marker. A little smiley face. Look at that. I've got a happy little butterfly right off the bat. This is a cute little decoration, a way to add some color to your room and a really pretty little thing. It can be a pencil topper. You can have it hang out. You also might see some pipe cleaners. So that's the butterfly method, which is really a pretty way to, to showcase your coffee filter art. Another way is to turn them into flowers. So I've got these pipe cleaners here. For example, I'm going to just take a green one. It can be any color. There's no rhyme or reason. Take a, a stem. Take one of your dry coffee filters. And this can be a little bit tricky, so you might need help with this. But right through the middle, you want to take this, this pipe cleaner and put it right through the middle. And you're going to have it stick up just a little bit. Now, the trick to keep it from falling over, sometimes you can glue this if you want to glue it. I just think you can bend it. So you see how I just bent this a little bit? Just so that it doesn't come right off when you push it this way. So if you've got your pipe cleaner bent a little bit, you've got the flower on here. Maybe you like it just like this. I like to push it down a little bit more. And now you fold the entire coffee filter over the pipe cleaner. And you can see I have it wrapped over. And now if you want to keep it this nice, loose-looking flower, you can put a piece of tape and just leave it like this. Alternatively, I like to twist it a little bit. So I'm twisting the base of this of the coffee filter right around the stem. And that's it. Look at this. You have a gorgeous flower that you created just from this beautiful coffee filter art. So this can be amazing decor. And obviously, because it's a pipe cleaner, you can bend it onto things. You can hang it onto anything that you have around. A beautiful adornment for your hair, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> this is a beautiful way that you can make some lovely flowers using your coffee filter art. I really hope you enjoyed this project. Whether you keep it as a sun catcher or a card or a beautiful flower, a butterfly, I really hope you had fun with this process and I thank you for your time. One more option if you want to save all of your coffee filters for one beautiful flower, you can take the same pipe cleaner, just your standard pipe cleaner. Take your dried coffee filter, do the same thing, stick it right through the middle, have it come out just a little bit, you can see right here. I'm going to bend the top corner of this just so that it doesn't come right off. And the same way that I showed you last time, you've got the flower and your pipe cleaner right here. I'm going to lower the coffee filter a little bit. I'm going to start to pinch right around the middle. I'm starting to fold it around. And you can make it a little bit tighter, a little bit looser. The key thing is to twist right here at the bottom of the coffee filter. I'm twisting this just a little bit so that it stays on. Now, if you like it like this, so I showed you in the last video, you've got a, a last section, you've got a go-to beautiful flower. But alternatively, you can layer them to make a really pretty robust flower. So the same thing, I've got my one, one petal flower right here. I'm going to add another one by stabbing through right the middle of the same coffee filter. This, uh, this next coffee filter, I'm pushing it up to the top, and I'm not going all the way against it. I'm leaving just a little bit of space so I can pinch it right around here, just a teensy bit. And then I want to pinch the second filter around the base of this top one. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to twist it around the pipe cleaner. And you can see here, now I'm starting to get a much more robust flower, right? So now it's got multiple layers. And you can imagine when you layer it with lots of really pretty colors, you can get some really cool effects. I've, I've made some really big ones before. You can keep it even just this dual layer. It creates a gorgeous effect. You can put it anywhere you like, and you have a beautiful decor with your coffee filter art. I really hope you enjoyed this.